Even as I was writing this review, I kind of knew that it was not going to go over that well. In fact, looking at the comments, I'm a little surprised at how popular it's turning out to be. Uh, it's a little less popular on my forum, probably because the more diehard fans are... Uh, the more old school type fans are hanging out there. I don't know if that's a big factor, but... Uh, yeah, I really changed the format up on this one. And I'm not sorry that I did that. I mean, almost all the complaints I've heard are probably absolutely correct. I mean, this is kind of a lowbrow sketch, and it pretty much is nothing but a sketch. It's nothing like my earlier reviews, and it does involve a lot of cameos with a lot of the other Channel Awesome guys. You're right. And, um... I like changing the format around. I like having my own show where I can do whatever I want to do. I don't have to do the same type of show, you know, week in and week out. And trust me, I would rather have, you know, a lot of freedom than being handcuffed to one format, being that guy, uh, being that critic who never changes his format, who, you know, basically every review he does is kind of the same thing. I mean, that's not a slam against other critics. They do what they do well. I just like being able to do different things. I, I I I can't believe people complain about variety. If if I didn't, if I was doing the same type of review all the time, people would say you never change. You know, you never bring anything new to the table. Hey, trust me. I mean, it's not like every review is going to be like this. There's going to be evolution in these reviews. But I'm not calling those people bad fans who don't like it. I mean, you're free not to like it. As with any variety, when you got you know your your when you got this whole variety of things, you're not going to like a few things. That's fine. I'm not calling you bad fans because of that. It just means that every once in a while, there's going to be an idea. I mean, I take these reviews really on a case by case basis, and you know, many of them are my traditional style of reviews. But with some, in some cases, when you have a board game like this that has a really funny video, this sketch idea occurs to me, and sometimes it's going to work, and sometimes it doesn't. That's like with Madness of Roland. I had all these videos, I had nothing to do with them, and so I decided, I was like, oh, what could I do with them that would make this video really funny? And so. You know, I, I kind of did what I had to to make a sketch out of that review. And it was just kind of a minor thing. But, I mean, this was kind of a minor thing, too. There was a little more production value that went into this one, of course. But, you know, we're making funny videos. So when when you have that kind of variety, it's going to work sometimes and sometimes not. And so if you didn't like it, it's not all going to be like this. You know, there will be, you know, there's going to be a return to form. It's just, I just Sometimes I sense a lot of panic in you. A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and a, a lot of like people started acting like really, really hurt. Like you, like I, I think more people really had a problem that I called this a review when I didn't really review it. I, uh, I, I you know, kind of made more of a a parody or like a spoof vlog of it, and they're like, "You called this a review, and it's not." Fuck you! And I'm like, oh, "Just chill, chill, chill." <laughs> But moving on at last, uh, this is sort of a continuation of the Captain America reviews in which I get confronted by the Gate Keither. Um, this is just because uh, Channel Awesome had... No, no, not just because, but uh, they picked up Little Kuribo, who does the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged series. And if you haven't checked that out, it's it's one of the most phenomenal series I think I've ever seen in my life. Oh, man, I used to... I watched the, all, all those episodes, like, all the way through, and I've probably missed a ton of them. I'm, I'm actually uh, uh, looking at for the channel on YouTube right now so I can see if there's any I missed and just to watch them again because they were that good but the one bit that really stuck with me and he, he probably hates this by the way I'm not sure but uh, uh, Bandit Keith's whole in America thing uh, I don't know I just I this play on words just kind of fell into my lap I was talking to little Kuribo and I asked him if she was willing to do this little animation for me and to my surprise he said yes uh, I can't do animation I can't do drawing and so to me, this what this guy does is is black magic. Like, there's no way I could do this stuff. And he just he whipped this out in a matter of days. So you know, it looks amazing too. I mean, he he drew this stuff in over a new background. Um, I actually remember this episode, and the backgrounds are completely different. I'll talk more about the board game in a second because you're right, I didn't review this one. But uh, the one bit of trivia coming up here is that this takes place on Earth 982, and uh, believe it or not, I did some research on this to find what parallel Earths existed. And nine, there's not really like an all-woman Earth, but 982 has is probably the most opposite in terms of gender role reversals. 
so that's why I kind of picked this one. Um, one thing that doesn't really come across in this video is I have a License to Drive poster, which is actually one of my more favorite movies back in the day. I used to watch that movie a lot, but uh, I don't know what that says about me, but um, it's one of the rare movies that has both Corys in it, and um, my sister was big into the Corys. She was also big into Wham. I, didn't, I couldn't find any good Wham posters. I couldn't find any good New Kids on the Block posters either, and that's the other poster that's in the background of this is a New Kids one, and I don't think it comes across that well because none of the posters I found were that good. The only really colorful posters that had like New Kids logos that were really huge um, were like just single character posters, like ones just just one with Donnie in it, or you know uh, that's the only one I remember actually is Donnie. But uh, the only group shot I had was that one where they're all kind of kicking it on a stoop, and the New Kids logo is really small, so I'm not sure it comes across that well. But you know I had to roll with what I had. But as for Party Mania, um, okay, here's the description of, of what Party Mania really is. It's essentially the teenage girl version of Nightmare in the 1980s, where instead of being sent to the black hole, you have to do homework and you have piano practice. So if you land on one of those spaces, you are stuck not playing while you have to do your piano practice. And instead of collecting keys, you're collecting get ready tokens. So instead of a key, you have to get a token that says you've done your hair. Things like that. Um, the character on screen right now is really funny. He is a very Canadian dad. Where he's, he, I, I tried to get the as many lines as possible where he sounds very Canadian, where he says like, "And what's so bad about staying home with the family, eh?" And like, this <laughs> is really funny stuff. That's why I say he's such a Canadian. But the big overriding joke in this review is that this I, I really harp mercilessly on the '80s. But what's interesting is that Party Mania is really a '90s game. I think it was made in 1992 or maybe even a little later. Yeah, but this you know, looks so it's 80s it's that it's crazy. And there are so many jokes that I make that are probably 90s-oriented jokes, like when Linkara appears as the 80s chick, I'm playing Step by Step by the New Kids. And, oh, you know, that was one joke. That here, I, I, if I can go back, um, I, I tried to show my legs, which I have, like, really hairy Wookiee legs, but I'm not sure that carried well that well on screen. You can actually see my surgical scar better than you can see the hair on my legs, but uh, the joke there was you were supposed to see, like, this really nasty forest of hair on my legs. But, um, anyway... I make so many 80s jokes, and this is really a 90s game, but it looks like it's an 80s game. And um, I, I guess that reminds me of a Mystery Science Theater episode called Zombie Nightmare, where they go to this nightclub where they're playing this very 80s music. There's a lot of neon lights and really harsh pastels and purples and things like that. And uh, what was the joke? Crow says something like, This is either America 10 years ago or Canada today. Kind of implying that Canada culturally, or at least like in terms of musical tastes and fashion sense, is like you know five to ten years behind the United States, which I still find a really hilarious concept. And that's no more true than it is here, where I, I think this is a very heavily Canadian production because there's so many characters that that have the aboot thing going on, you know, and it's it, it's stereotypical, I know, but they all do say aboot here. It's so gross. <laughs> Like anyway, um, hair. this game, it's it's almost literally just a graphic swap version of Nightmare with, you know, different words. Instead of the black hole, it's homework, uh, you know, but you've got the same things. You get note cards where you have to do stupid things whenever your time comes up. Most of them involve, like, uh, prancing around like a ballerina, and people have to guess that you're a ballerina. If they guess right, you both get to lose a chore card. And in that, in that regard, this is actually a lot better game <laughs> than Nightmare. Because it's actually, uh, there, there's a little bit of interplay between the players. It's not just yelling in people's ears and, you know, getting punched in the face. There's not a lot of, like, cheap jump-out-of-your-seat scares. Now, I mean, it doesn't have any characters as iconic as the Gatekeeper, of course, but I actually find that if you were to play this at a party, it would probably go over a lot well than the kind of bullshit annex that go on in Nightmare, where, you know, people are routinely just yelling at you, like, ah! Andrews. Come and oh look, it's little oh, Kaylee. Right. And yep, I had to do. I, I do some research on this shit. Like I, I do my homework on this. You know, that's Jewel State. That's little Kaylee right there. I couldn't believe it. Actually, the research I did said that Jewel State was in this game, but it didn't make it clear who she was supposed to be. I actually had to go through and look through all the female characters, and it was either it was either her. Or the other best friend, Becca. And I was like, it doesn't look like Becca. It has to be Catherine. So I was, I kind of guess at one point. Um, Benzai was very good. He offered to shave his beard. I was like, I could never shave off that, be that, 
that beautiful goatee and beard. You gotta keep it on because you're a dirty, hairy French chick. And um, he was actually very cool that I was bashing the French, making Jerry Lewis jokes. <laughs> he was cool with it. Uh, I'd imagine if I was French, I wouldn't be nearly as cool with this Yankee bastard making fun of my country. But he's cool with it. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, there's there's a review of Party Mania right there. It's it's basically the girly version of Nightmare and. Uh, if you if you really wanted me to, to take 30 seconds and, and say that, I guess I could have, but really would have broken up the flow of the uh, little sketch I have going on here, so I didn't do that, and so I'm actually very proud of myself with the way I tied it in with the whole gatekeeper thing and the whole Dr. Insano second possible origin thing. You know, like, every world has an, an origin for Dr. Insano, and this one happens to be one where it's a schlumper brother who has an unrequited love for a future version of me that gets sent back through dimensions and has his own origin. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't know, is it just me, or do I see a lot of myself in the kind of the longish-haired, dark-haired schlumper brother right there? I just, I see so much of myself in so many of these characters. <laughs> I don't know. Oh God, such it's like I tried to show as much of the schlumpers as I could because they're far and away the the show stealers of this video, where they uh, they're always very creepy and they always have this jizz in their pants look whenever they talk about you. Um, and they have the, all these little sciencey things they do. Um, they always open up their little videos with this really kind of gay salute, where they kind of do this like patty cake thing, and they. They're like, Worldwide Incorporated? Like, these guys have a little sketch rehearsed every time they talk to people. You just kind of imagine them bopping around school doing their whole little, like, We're the Schlumper Brothers! We! You know? Oh, I, I invent this little world for myself. They kind of live in this little Beekman's World type laboratory, too, which, you know, if I could make my room look like that, I totally would. Talk to you later. Well, let's see. I'm trying to think of what other things I can tell you about my experience shooting this thing. Oh, somebody pointed out they can actually see a tear rolling down my cheek, saying I'm a really good actor because I feel my character's pain. Now, it's really hot in that room because I'm wearing so much costuming, and uh, I, I tend to run kind of hot anyway because it's, it's kind of warm in my room. And beyond that, I'm also under, like, you know, two to 3,000 watts of lights. So after a while, the lighting really starts to bear down on me. I start to sweat really bad. It's actually something I'm struggling with quite a bit, trying to keep myself cool as I do these reviews. Anytime in, I'm in front of a green screen, you can kind of see me really sweating balls. Um, I, I, yeah, keeping cool is actually a, a really big struggle for me right there, especially when I'm wearing a lot of wigs. Like the turl thing, I almost keeled over doing the turl costume because it was so hot. I was in like two layers of leather, uh, three kinds of facial appliances, a wig. Uh, it was crazy. 3,000 watts of lights. Um, coming up, I, I was really excited actually when I was watching this video to see the party. Just to see what was, like, I, this party could not have lived up to the hype because the entire time people are like you have to go see this party it's going to be like the social event of the life of your lifetime and so now you see like the most whitest canadian dancing ever <laughs> oh I, I like to single out one person in each video trying to find their little facial expressions it's like that guy looks so creepy there's one guy who's just kind of rocking back and forth in his flannel and oh it's so bad and of course, if you fail to go to the party, you have to see the Schlumper Brothers. And I don't know. I'm just digging the one on the right. He has blue pants. Like he's not even blue. They're kind of like like turquoise. Oh. They have taped glasses, of course. God, I see so much of myself in these two. And of course, they have matching suspenders, sweaters, and bow ties. That looks, I love these guys have a coordinated system. And what's really creepy about this, they, I, I don't think a, an issue that's really addressed here, is that they're both in love with you. So both brothers are actively trying to hit on you at the same time. And that raises so many weird issues. Like, are, are they both planning to score? Or, like, like ah, oh, weird. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's another issue that's not raised here is whatever happened to the other Schlumper brother. And uh, no doubt that will be addressed in another review. Um, Actually, that, that that's another question. Uh, a lot of people seem to be really convinced there's going to be a sequel to this one. And I did not write this with a sequel in mind, even though I have kind of a to-be-continued card. Um. Maybe I I, I I had not planned a sequel, and unless I actually go back and and try to review Weird Science, which I don't know, I might. Um, no, nah, there probably won't be a sequel to this one unless I can find some other some other game that's kind of very 80s in this regard, or you know, do Weird Science. I don't know what. 
I, I'm actually wondering if there was any kind of weird science game. It, it kind of seems like the type of franchise that would lend itself pretty well to a game. I'm not sure how, but uh, I should look into that. Anyway, I mean, I understand the complaints that came down in this one, and I'm sorry. it's They're not all going to be this way, but, you know, most of my life, most of these reviews, you know, are kind of throwbacky type stuff. Most of the stuff I grew up with in the 80s are the stuff I watched my sister grow up with or my brothers and, you know, things like that, so... You know, I, I grew up with weird science. I grew up with movies with the Corys in them, and you know, I, I have a soft spot for them. And so, yeah, bit of sketch. <laughs> Can't all be winners, but uh, you know, a lot of other people liked it. So, whatever. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can say about the game. I did not actually play this game. I played the uh, Nightmare game, so I couldn't actually tell you how much, you know, how well this game plays. I, like I said, I think it actually would play a lot smoother and cleaner with a lot less bullshit, but. This game, like, so many of these VCR games just kind of have, like, a, like, an eject seat at, like, five minutes before the end, and they just kind of give you everything you need. Like, they make it so hard to get, get ready tokens or keys, but the last five minutes, they just kind of like, one person, uh, you know, take your fucking keys, and you win, you know? <laughs> so it's actually very hard to lose this game. Oh, I gotta tell you, though, the one joke of this one I'm, I'm very proud of, and it's probably not that good a joke because I have to explain it here, is <laughs> because uh, um, when Jewel State comes on screen, I make a Kaylee joke, where I'm like, good luck at the party, you midget bitch, you can't take this guy from me, which is a Firefly joke, where you can't take this guy from me, and I, it's a play on words, and... It's a bad joke, and I'm sorry, but I'm very proud of it. It worked much better on paper, but I, I it was good in my head. 